It's no question that as a 3D printer, you're gonna have tons and tons of tools and doodads around your workshop. As a matter of fact, I think it might even be more common to buy a tool that you're gonna use like once or twice and then set it off on a shelf to never be seen again. But that's okay because that's the essence of what we do. Now on the opposite end of the spectrum, there's gonna be tools that you use for almost every single print that you do. Let's get into it. Here's my top five tools that I cannot live without in my 3D printing workflow. First off, we've got sanding bricks or handles or sponges, whatever you wanna call them. They're a tool that allow you to ergonomize economically sand your prints without running into any hand fatigue, cramps, or just pure uncomfortableness. I, I get it, I get it. You got soft hands, brother, but not everything needs to be a manly competition. If I'm sanding 40 helmets a year, I'm gonna wanna take care of my hands. I personally use a sponge because it allows me to wrap the sandpaper around it and get a nice ergonomic sand, and it forms well to whatever surface I'm sanding. You can also actually get these in their own different grits so you can sand with the sponge itself. But personally, I like the flexibility of just wrapping the sandpaper around it so that way you can get in and out as you need and if it gets dull you swap it out with another piece without having to get a whole other sponge. For number two we've got a heat blaster. Social media doesn't like the G word. These come in all shapes and sizes and they're super handy when you're working with 3D prints. I think I got this one for maybe $18. Now, these are great for a few reasons. The first reason I use this is to make my supports just that much easier to take off when it's time. And the second one's a little bit more unique. When I need to expand the tolerances of my connectors on my prints, I'll give the female end a little bit of a heat blast, which makes it a little bit more pliable, and then it holds the connection even better once it's cooled off. There's just tons of things that you can do. And if you get into electronics, it's got a bunch of other uses. Now, these last three all kind of fall under the same level of usefulness. So, number three is a digital caliper. This thing is fantastic. See, I do a lot of functional prints and accessories for things that I have in my house, as well as a little bit of robotics tinkering. And both of those need pretty accurate measurements. Now, I could technically use like a ruler or a tape measure or something, but it just doesn't do it for me. This thing, this thing does the job. Their usage is super simple. You just put it up against whatever you want to measure, and then you spin it open or closed, and the screen will tell you the exact size that you're looking for. Now, that in itself is super handy, but I also like the back side, where if you need to measure the interior side of an object, you put it in the object, and and then turn the wheel, and that will give you the exact distance between the two points from the inside of the object. This one definitely is a way more simple object, but I just find myself using this nonstop. This next one I find super useful as somebody who builds a lot of big prints and props that need to be assembled with a sturdy bond. This is a hot knife. It's the same concept as a soldering iron in the sense that it's got a metal tip that gets super, super hot. And if you know anything about 3D printing, making the plastic hot is how we're able to make the things that we do. Now, more specifically, I use this whenever I wanna form a smooth bond between two parts of a print that are going together. It allows me to weld the plastic nice and smooth so I don't have to worry about any bumps or crevices when I go to prime and paint my props. Say that one five times fast. Now, even if you have a more complex build that may not allow you to weld the outside together like this NCR Ranger helmet that I'm working on, what I can still do is glue these two pieces together and weld them from the inside so I don't have to worry about welding all these weird artifacts right here. It could work, but I feel like it would be too tedious and I also feel like it would just ruin the texture overall. So if we place those welds inside here, then I'll have nothing to worry about because you can't see it from the outside and it'll still be just as strong. Also, with all the heads that come with the hot knife, there's just so many applications for it. It's one of those things that I find new uses for all the time. Now that brings us to number five and my most used, most important tool in my workflow. But first, some honorable mentions. You of course can never go wrong with a drill. Tons of applications for it and I use it to put holes in my models where needed. And sanding files are also gonna go a super long way. A lot of the intricate models we print just have a lot of weird artifacts and weird angles that you can't really get into sand with your hand. So these files come in super, super handy. And of course, duplicates of everything. These are my clippers right here. I actually have like four or five sets. I know, I know that sounds like overkill, but hear me out. When I'm actively working on a print and I'm in the zone, I need one of these basically everywhere. So if I don't have the one that I thought that I had, I've got another set somewhere in my workshop. The last thing you wanna do is be super locked into your grind and can't find that one tool that you need the most. Speaking of, number five, my rotary tool. This thing is my baby, the holy grail. Aww. I know I've said this a lot, but there are just so many applications for this thing. It comes with a sanding tool head, a deburring tool head, a cutting tool head, a buffing tool head, and a bunch of other stuff. Like what more could you need in one tool than exactly what this is? It's essentially just a little hand drill that has all these other different modifications that you could throw on for 
every use in the book. A perfect example is the breaker that I'm building from Helldivers 2. The stock has these holes that I can't get inside with sandpaper to sand down, and they kind of stand out and look ugly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the rotary tool with the sanding tool head, and I'm gonna get in there and just knock them out. Amongst other things, the cutting tool head allows me to get super precise cuts on smaller parts of my models. I would not want to go in there with anything larger and rounder than this size because it risks me damaging the entire print. And the best part is you can use it however you want to. I think that one even comes with a shroud so I can use it as if it were a router on wood or acrylic and not get a mess everywhere. Now, I'm probably never gonna do that, but the fact that I can is insane. And more importantly, that toolkit came out at a price point of about $35 to $40. For something that I use on every single helmet and every single large prop, I can't recommend it enough. Also, if you haven't realized, I'm kind of a diva. It's not too obtrusive in my hands and it's super easy to work with. And that is the list. I can't stress enough how often I actually do use every single one of these items in my workflow in getting a print from start to finish. Technically, you could do everything by hand or there is some sort of handheld alternative, but it just makes life so much easier. As a matter of fact, I, I don't know if you can hear it through the mic, but I've got my printer right here printing another helmet that I'm gonna have to absolutely obliterate with sandpaper and my routing tool. But with that being said, if there are any tools that you find in your workflow that you can't live without, I am always open to suggestions making my life easier. So drop them in the comments below. And if you learned something today, drop a like and don't forget to subscribe to help me build the best 3D printing community on the planet. Prime and paint my props, prime and paint my props, prime and prime, prime and props.